Welcome to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Podcast with me Evangelist Terry Brunson, God's man of faith and power for this hour. Before I being the topic the Spirit is directing to Frank or Fancies. You have a severe condition in your body where the doctors have given up on you. Ha, 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 I am laughing at the devil. I don't care what the doctors have said, I don't what the nurses have said. I don't even care what the devil has said. I know what the Lord God of heaven and earth has said. I am the God that can take away sickness labeled incurable. I am the God that can heal you of any kind of sickness. Let every man be a liar. But let God be true. I speak the resurrection power of Yezu over Frank or Franzis to be healed. The condition in your body is reversing right now. Lift your faith to receive the power of God to reverse the curse. Be done in Jesus' name. Our topic of study is chosen in Jesus. That is a topic not spoken of in a church setting to offend. Take God's word and let's read. Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 5, 11. God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. 11. In Jesus we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things of his own will. All saints were chosen in Jesus before the foundation of the world the adoption of predestination to be an heir of salvation according to the purpose of God who works all things of his own will. God is the awaking source of the elect by the Spirit to draw those chosen to respond among the saints ordained unto eternal life to be saved by an election of grace to those that believe the gospel at its presentation. Acts 13 verse 48 says, When they heard the gospel presented, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. The salvation of the saints stands in being chosen and predestinated according to the purpose of God who works all things of his own will to draw the called into Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1 verses 1-4 says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. 2 To the elect according to the foreknowledge of God, through the Spirit unto obedience by the blood of Jesus, according to his mercy by an inheritance that fades not away which is reserved in heaven for you. The doctrine of election engulfs all of the any of 2 Peter 3 verse 9 that God doesn't want to perish. It is the elect that Peter refers to as the any that God doesn't want to be lost. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, God is not willing that any should be lost. Who are these any being mentioned here that Peter says that God is not willing that they should perish? The elect predestined. The any are the elect who God has chosen before the foundation of the world by being predestinated. God uses the activity of evangelism to present the gospel to the world where the any are drawn to believe the gospel unto eternal life. These are the elect. God wants heaven to be repopulated with the elect of whom God has chosen long ago to be a part of the any adopted into Jesus Christ drawn by grace, through faith, unto the good's works of salvation. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10 The any are the four as many of John 1 verse 12 who believe on his name to be saved. John 1 verse 12 says, But as many, IIT says as many, as received Jesus, to them gave he the power, to become a son or daughter of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 6 verse 65 says, And Jesus said, Therefore, no man can come unto me, except it was given unto him of my Father. We all were born into a state of unregeneracy as into sin. We inherited from Adam a nature that is against God's will. Romans 5 verse 12. Romans 5 verse 19 says, By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. In the unregeneracy state no one has the ability to come to Jesus, they are dead to the spiritual desire to want to choose to be saved. Isaiah 48 verse 8. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 5. And you have he quickened, who were dead in sins. 2 Wherein in time past you walked according to this world, according to the prince of the air as the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. 3 Among whom we all had our conduct in the lusts of our flesh and were by nature the children of wrath. 4 But God, who in mercy loved us. 5 Even when we were dead in sins, he has made us alive in Christ by an awaking. There is an awakening of the elect by the Father's mercy and a quickening of man from a state of unregeneracy to come to Jesus by the gospel. 
Imagine being in the state of Colorado on Pikes Peak miles above sea level, or you may be at sea level, or you may be in a silver mine below sea level, or you are somewhere in between, but one thing for sure you're still in the state of Colorado. A person in the state of unregeneracy might be able to live a high moral life and a high standard, or he might live an average decent life, or he might live a low down dirty life or be living somewhere in between the spiritual plane. But he's still in the state of unregeneracy. He was born into that state, and there remains until he is born again of the Spirit. John 3 verse 3 says. Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In man's state of unregeneracy he does what is natural by the works of the flesh, both good and bad. The works of the flesh is what has a natural man hanging in bars, stealing cars, club hooping, beer popping, dope using, and self-abusing. Pistol packing, live and lover shacking, masturbating, fornicating, adulterating, homosexualitating. Sinning and grinning. The natural man born in the state of unregeneracy has no ability to come to Jesus unless God's mercy draws the natural man towards God's regeneration work. John 6 verse 44 says, No man can come to me, except the Father which has sent me draws him. The person in the state of unregeneracy has to be quickened by God in an awakening work to make it possible for one spiritually dead to be made alive to make a response to want to seek God. It's not in man to want to seek God. There must be a compulsion to jumpstart the dead soul from unregeneracy to a state of regeneracy. See Job 32 verse 8 which says, The inspiration of man to want to seek God has to be given to him by the understanding of God through the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man must be awakened by God's ability to set an awakening in man's spirit by the Holy Spirit. Except the power of the Spirit stand up in a sinner, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God without God's supernatural work in man to jump his dead spirit to make it alive. The awakening of the inner man is a God work done by God alone to turn on a light in man to want to seek God. Ephesians 3 verse 16 says, That God would grant us, according to the riches of His glory, to strengthen us with might by His Spirit in the inner man. This inner man wakening is a God work by God's strength and not our own. We may make a boast that we had a choice, but not in this work. This is God's great awakening in man to introduce man to the new man God has awakened. 1 Samuel 10 verse 6 says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, that you shall be turned into another man. The awakening of God is a work to introduce you to the new you God is making in the regeneration process. Titus 3 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to God's mercy, He saves us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost in the human spirit. It's a spiritual work by the Spirit in the inner man where God introduces the human spirit to the Holy Spirit. If you would take time to meditate on 1 Samuel 10 verse 6, which tells us, It is by the Spirit of the Lord coming upon us to turn us to another man. That other man is the new spiritual man. We have nothing to do in making this inner spiritual man come alive. It is an awakening of God. It is God working in us without our input. He prepares us for the spiritual man to be awakened in the inner spirit of man by the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 20 verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of man to make room for the new spiritual man. Proverbs 20 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of man to make room for the new spiritual man. See Romans 8 verses 1 and 2, 5, 8, 9, 11, 14, 16, 27. 1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 2 For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 5 For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. 8 So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 9 But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God. 11 But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 16 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. 
27 And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he mocketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. This is the work of regeneration, a God work in us for us. Regeneracy must precede faith acceptance. We cannot faith a response to accept salvation until we get regened by the Spirit of God to prepare us to respond to God to join the elect who were chosen by a predestinated plan to be quickened by the unseen process where God on the inside of a spiritually dead soul awakes the dead spirit to make it able to chose to want to or respond to the gospel call. Ephesians 5 verse 14 says God has to awake us the dead spirit to come alive to make room for Christ to live in the heart. Until Jesus room for in the heart by the Spirit, we are dead to all the revelations of God. There is an election of grace to be chosen into by an election of grace, to decide to join God's Christian club. You made a membership association to a religious cause to worship in its cliques and culture to follow their moral code bonded by the flesh will of deciding. What we need is God's election of grace. This process is skipped by so many in the body of Christ. They joined the church in a religious way and missed the election of grace. By the election of grace means being bonded to salvation by the grace of God alone, for Christ's sake. Through the means of grace, we are brought to faith to be justified before we find a way to be qualified, to be accepted before we find a way to make ourselves acceptable. God sets us apart to be endowed by grace, through faith, and under the fruitage of good works. See Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10. The Doctrine of Election by Grace Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 7 Meditate on this. 3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. For according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. 5 Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted. 7. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 13-14 Meditate on this. 13. God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. 14. Whereunto He called you by the gospel, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9 Meditate on this. Who hath saved us, and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Faith to choose gets endowed to the elect by God's eternal election in the regeneration process of being born again. The election of grace allows the human spirit to connect with the Holy Spirit to awaken the soul to rightly respond to the gospel. 1 Peter 1 verse 23 shows that being born again is not a work of the corruptible sperm seed, but it is of the incorruptible seed by the word of God. The word is like the water. You are washed with the word, and the spirit attaches to that word as the gospel, and you are awakened to respond to God's salvation call. John 3 verse 5 says except a man be born of water of the word and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The water is not baptism, it is the Word of God impressed by the Spirit on the human spirit to answer the salvation call. Many are called, but few are chosen by the election of grace where God awakens the sinner to want to seek God. Psalm 110 verse 3 says God's people shall be made willing in the day of His power to awaken the elect unto the beauties of holiness. Psalms 3 verse 8 says salvation belongs to God to work it by His power. I want to pause for a cause so you can hear what Sister Grace our faith clinic announcer has to say about rendering support unto the gospel cause of God. You have a money obligation to God to give support to the work of God. Sister Grace will outline the action steps. I just want to say that giving unto God is part of the salvation experience where you give to get to receive something from heaven. Nothing leaves heaven until something leaves the earth says John 3 verse 27. The offering that you give will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. It will go into your future to multiple as an expected harvest from your seed sown. Here is Sister Grace. Hello, I am Sister Grace, the Faith Clinic Fellowship podcast announcer. Hey, if you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Faith Clinic Fellowship is a ministry of good ground to sow your sea of faith and financial pledge. On your phone you can make a cash app donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Outreach. 
The Cash App is dollar sign Terry Brunson 61. That Cash App is dollar sign T E R R Y B R U N S O N 61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, or more to the Faith Clinic cause. There is a financial covenant you can enter into to give a donation. Psalms 50 verse 5 says, Gather the saints of God together to give by a covenant offering in a sacrifice. Bring a seed of money to the Lord to sow towards your harvest expectation. There are 25 of you listing that can sow a seed of faith. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, or more to the Faith Clinic cause. Your offering that you give will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. It will go into your future to multiple as an expected harvest from your seed sown. If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Nothing leaves heaven until something leaves the earth out of your hand, says John 3 verse 27. You can sow. Sow what? Sow your seed towards a harvest in expectation. The Bible says you can sow for a healing, a financial breakthrough. New job. Deliverance from drug use and self-abuse. On your phone you can make a Cash App donation to the Faith Clinic Fellowship Outreach. The Cash App is dollar sign Terry Brunson 61. That Cash App is dollar sign T E R R Y B R U N S O N 61. It's on the screen. You can give $1, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, or more to the Faith Clinic cause. If you want to climb up to the Rolex living, you have got to come off of the Timex giving. Sell an offering today without delay. To Cash App is dollar sign T E R R Y B R U N S O N 61. Let's return to Evangelist Terry Brunson's topic of study. Thank you Sister Grace for your words of timely stewardship support. We now are now back to our topic. Chosen in Jesus. PowerPoint 1. We praise the Father who selected us. Ephesians 1 verses 4 to 6. According to Him choosing us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Having predestinated us unto by an adoption in Jesus unto Himself, according to the good pleasure of His plan, power, and will. For us to have been selected before we were born. It is to the praise of His grace, wherein He has made us acceptable in Jesus. This is the Father's selection of who is to be saved. He knows the number to repopulate heave with to fill the void of the fallen angels kicked out of heaven. Romans 8 verses 29-30 says, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. Whom he did predestinate, them he called and justified to be glorified. The Father selected long ago those who are to be in heaven. He keeps a foreknew record of all that will conform to the image of his Son by his predestinate plan. God in his sovereign knowledge can see into the future to know who is going to respond to the gospel when it is preached. God's selection is in a golden chain of him knowing who will respond to the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ. In Titus 1 verses 1 to 2, Paul, a servant of God according to the, 1, faith of God's elect, and, 2, acknowledging of the truth towards godliness. In, 3, hope and eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began in three aspects. 1, justification, the work of God that saves up front. 2, sanctification, the work of the human will to want to seek God's will. 3, glorification, the total victory celebrated in glory. 2 Timothy 1 verses 8-9 says, The gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us, and called us, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Paul says that he preaches the gospel so the elect can hear it and believe. Predestination deals with the elect's conformity in Jesus whom the Father chooses and draws to come. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4 God will have all the elect be saved and come unto the knowledge of this truth. How does it works? John 6 verses 37 and 39, 44 says, All the Father gives to the Son shall come, and those will come to the Son, the fathers will send the Son, that all the elect the Father has chosen will come to the Son, and not, one, one shall be lost. No one can come to the Son, except the Father draws them to the Son. 
PowerPoint 2. We praise the Son who saved us. Ephesians 1 verses 7 to 13 says, In him, the Son, we have redemption through his blood according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded to us all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he purposed in himself to use his own blood as a price to save sinners. In the fullness of time Jesus gathered one plan in all things to be the satisfaction to redeem both heaven and earth in being the source of salvation, by the means of the cross. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ's blood. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth from the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed on his blood. We set ourselves to praise the Son for his death on the cross where he shed his blood as the price to redeem. God made what Jesus did on the cross abound to us as a way of salvation and inheritance of the counsel of his own will. The mystery that opens to us an eternal redemption which was transferred from the sacrifice of animals' blood unto Jesus' blood. See Hebrews 9 verse 12. The ultimate and intimate mystery of all was eternal redemption by his own blood. The mystery is in how Jesus' blood could cleanse sin's black stain. It is a mystery is how a black stain life of sin can be made white and pure by application of the red blood of Jesus. That's the great mystery. It is a mystery how a brown cow can give yellow butter and white milk. Sin is a stain on humanity as dark as death. But Jesus brought the mystery by his red blood over the black stain of sin to make it before the Father white and pure. This way of Jesus' redemption in his blood was in the Father's purpose, plan, and will. The Jews first trusted this in animals' blood, but we trust now in Jesus' blood to do a mystery work of redemption. 1 Peter 3 verse 18 says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. In predestination, the elect are called by a gospel in God through Jesus on a cross. We are to give praise to the Son for His work that makes salvation a reality for us who are elected to believe. On the cross Jesus saved the lost at a cost He paid in full. Jesus is the source of salvation, but the cross becomes the means of that salvation. Jesus on the cross has one purpose, His work of. At one meant for sin. Salvation is centered in the work of Jesus at the cross, to save the elect, by a cost of his blood to bring the elect unto God by salvation. PowerPoint 3. We praise the Spirit who sealed us. Ephesians 1 verses 13 and 14 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise. There is our praise. Of his glory. In whom Jesus Christ also after we believe what Jesus did for us at the cross. Then the Spirit of God seals with a promise made possible by the cross. The earnest of the inheritance was Jesus in his fullness as payment for sin by his blood. We praise the Spirit for getting in us to perform the goodly works of God. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, It's God which works in us to will to do of his good pleasure. Who does the work? God does. How? Through the will of men and women to will to do. It is a free will worked over by God's mercy and grace that has been enabled by the Spirit. The will is fixed to want to want to do God's will. The free will is only free to choice rightly through the Spirit. In the flesh we can only choose wrongly because there are too many options. In the flesh we are not free to choose without the Spirit's work on making the right choice on the guarantee of our salvation in Jesus by the cross where he paid the cost by his blood. Free will in salvation does not mean control of the will by God. It is love that constrains the following under the Spirit. Jesus said before he left that it is expedient that I go. I will send the Holy Spirit to be in you and upon you. He will give you the power to be my witnesses. See Acts 1 verse 8. The Holy Spirit is given to them who are constrained to obey by the power of his enabling. See Act 5:32. A relationship with Jesus constrains our will to conform to God's will. 
By the Spirit's work there is a molding of the will toward obedience to glorify God by the fruit of the Spirit more than the fruit of the person. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, He who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 verse 11 says, Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which fruits are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Romans 2 verse 4 says, It's the goodness of God which leads one to want to repent. Philippians 2 verse 13 says, It's God which works in us to will to do of His good pleasure. God has an elective grace that will respond to God's mercy. God calls the called and He qualifies them to respond to the gospel when it is heard. There is a move of the Spirit in salvation to make it just as God orders. Psalm 3 verse 8 says, Salvation belongs unto the Lord to bless it upon His people. Salvation is not as hard as it is made. Salvation is a God work of mercy and grace that God will qualify His people to respond to. This is sealed into the believer by the Holy Spirit. I would like to take this opportunity to give you a chance to connect with Jesus who can give satisfaction to all that looks towards Him. He give living water for new life and success towards abundance. 2 Timothy 2 verse 1 tells us to be strong in Jesus and not in our, our power of the flesh to do good. Rule keeping don't make good disciples. Trusting Jesus does. Now. Pray with me now this prayer, Lord Jesus dash I repent of all wrong thinking about God. I desire the blood of Jesus to clean my sins away. I now say yes to Jesus and claim his blood as the cleansing power over my troubled past life of sin. I accept the blood, and I claim the blood. In Jesus' name Amen.